This is a struggle with 99% of the tripods that exist out on the market today. If you wanna make adjustments, whether you wanna go up, you wanna go down, or if you wanna just get some low angle shots, this is the type of struggle, and you guys are gonna to relate to this, for those of you that own 99% of the tripods out there, this is what you have to deal with. So if I wanna extend the legs, typically the easiest, if I'm solo obviously, is lift up the tripod, and in this case, unlatch it, extend the leg, turn it around, do the same. Sometimes even worse, you have to twist it. Those are the worst ones. Now, if I wanna get some low angle shots, I have to pop this open, hold on, fight with it a little bit, do that, and oh, you know what, it's not wide enough. The struggle is real, okay? It's a pain in the butt. If you wanna trans ah, transport it, and then the legs get all crisscrossed, and it's not fun, okay? I despise tripods up until I saw this one. I saw this at NAB last year and I finally got to use it about four months ago when I did my collaboration video with Gene, AKA Potato Jet. He has a set of these and they are life changing and you guys are gonna see why. First of all, the way you make adjustments is everything is above here. You no longer have to bend down, do all this fiddling around with it. Let me show you. So each leg has this locking lever. So if I wanna make adjustments, I can just open it up, if I wanna go up, lock it into place, I am done. I don't have to lift it up, do any of that. If I wanna go down, same thing, go down into place, lock it, and I am done. So this is a two-stage tripod that only uses this one lever. So for example, this tripod is also a two-stage, but it has two levers. So you open one up, it extends to you know maybe a couple feet, then you lock that one. If you wanna go a little bit higher, you have to use this other one. Not so with this one. So one lever, you can go two stages. So I can go all the way down or all the way up. So depending on your height, look how high this goes. This is pretty tall. Uh, you can make these adjustments. Now, let me bring it down just to show you something else. Now, if I wanted to make or get a very low angle shot, another thing that I can do is with one push of a button, I can extend the leg very easily so I don't have to fiddle around with it and then I can lock it into place. And then I can also, depending on the height I want, it'll actually lock into place. So for example, different stages and you can hear it click. Now this actually has a mid-level spreader which you can actually remove very easily. So it has these two little buttons right here that you can uh, remove. I typically don't use the mid-level spreader just because I like the portability of it. But if I am using it here in the studio and if I am putting a lot more weight, I will use it, so it's very handy that you can remove it or take it on and off very easily. The feet are made out of rubber and you can convert them over to spike feet in literally one second. So you just pull the lever and it detaches from itself. And if you're going to be filming, for example, on ice or if you're gonna be filming in a surface area that is very slippery and you need to use spike feet, it can literally be done in a matter of seconds. Again, one of those things that I don't know why other manufacturer, tripod manufacturers, have not done, but the convenience factor is there if you are a filmmaker that chooses to film in different environments. So I don't typically use them, but it's nice to have. Now the legs themselves are made out of carbon fiber and they do support up to 44 pounds, which is plenty for these small cinema cameras or even some heavier ones. Uh, you can also buy the legs separately if that's what you prefer. They do have two versions. They have a 75 millimeter bowl and another one with a 100 millimeter bowl mount. So if you already have a fluid head and you wanna mount your own, you can already do that. In my case, I actually got to use, cause Gene has this whole entire setup, Mr. Potato Jet. Uh, he has the FSB-8 Sackler. And if you guys are familiar with the Sackler brand, they make some, in my opinion, some of the best fluid heads on the market. They are very nice. They are really high end. And when I tried his out, this was amazing because he uses a lot of airy cameras, fully rigged, and typically they're about 15, 20 pounds in some cases. My whole setup with a cage and everything fully rigged is around 10 pounds. So this eats it up like cake. So. Uh, I really like this head, it works really well. This fluid head has a 10 step counterbalance. So for example, on the C200, if I wanna, you know, wanna leave the camera there, I can just leave it. Or if I wanna make adjustments, it's not gonna fall in its face. And this alone right now, it's on setting number three. And again, this has a 10 step. So 
even if the camera was much heavier, it can easily hold it and it's not gonna fall on its face. This thing is very, very smooth. So you can have a tilt and drag control. So for example, right now I loosened it up all the way to zero and you can see this thing is super smooth. It's basically uh, based off of inertia. So if I give it 25%, it flows and then it stops really uh, smoothly. If I set it to one, so I'm gonna add a little bit more drag. It's a lot slower, but it's a lot also smoother. So you can see here. So one of the things I despise is when there's fluid heads fluid heads that are really jerky. So you get that movement or it starts really jerky. I don't like that. So with this one, you can see here, it's a lot smoother. I just switched it to three. So once it locks, there it goes. You can see how smooth it is. Now, typically there is a handle. I don't have it, it comes with a handle. Also a carrying bag, which is a really nice bag. I don't typically use a handle ever because I mount my C200. So if I wanna get those really smooth movements, I have this handle here and then I can do that. So again, buttery smooth movements, pan, tilt, whatever it is. But my favorite feature about this head, and this is kind of what sold me, and I'll show you guys really quickly here, let me just turn this around, is the side load plate. So if I loosen this up and I push this button, I'll show you, I can take the camera off and on without having to slide it forward and back. This will support Manfrotto 501 plates, so you can still use 501 plates and you can still side load it with a 501 plate, but I love just being able to do this because a lot of times, locked into place, a lot of times there's might be a wall right here and I can't slide it out. So right now it's locked in, but with this I can just push a button, unload the camera, load it, really easy, side load. This is actually what sold me. That quick release is just freaking awesome. Something else that may seem small and insignificant, but to me it's like the little things that count, is this touch illuminating bubble. So for example, if I push on it here, it illuminates. So if I'm filming at night and I wanna readjust my ball head, I can do that. It's now centered. And then once I'm done, I can just go ahead and push it and it turns off. I know it's like the little things, but it's nice to have. And then lastly, one of my favorite features is the legs itself at the bottom have this magnet. So I'll show you guys. If I wanna transport this, you can hear it lock into place. Those are the magnets. And then I can just carry this very easily. And the shape of the actual tripod itself is not like your typical shape where it's tubular. This has this really nice, I don't know, it's, it's this, it fits really well in your shoulders. So transporting this, especially if you're on conventions or anything like that, um, is very easy. But like, it takes a while, it takes a little bit of muscle to open that up because of the uh, locking mechanism here but it's nice for transporting the tripod. You know they're not just gonna open up and your fingers are not gonna get crushed in between. That's really important. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about how this tripod has been life-changing. Now, I don't wanna sound like I'm lazy, but typically when I use other tripods, I tend to plan my shots around one or maybe two positions. I don't wanna be fiddling around, going up, down, it just takes way too much time. So typically I leave it more or less around this angle and all my shots I try to plan around this. This tripod lends itself to be able to adjust. So if I wanna get a lower shot, no problem, I can just do that. If I wanna go higher, I can just do that easily. Lock it into place and get the shots that I need. If I wanna go low angle, easily. Just do that, do that on all the legs and I am ready to go. So for me, having a tripod that's gonna save time, but most importantly, how much is your back worth? Ask any filmmaker how they feel about their back. Trust me, the longer you do this, you start to appreciate these things and you can't really put a price tag on it. So for me, this tripod has been life-changing. Also, I've owned a ton of different tripods from Benro to Manfrotto and I've spent a ton of money. If you were to accumulate all of the money that I've spent on tripods, it'll be over $10,000. Now for me, a tripod is an investment. It's not like a camera that I plan to upgrade in a couple of years. This is something I plan to keep for a very long time, if not forever. That has not been the case with my experience with tripods. For me, I'd rather buy my first and last set of legs instead of wasting money and eventually spending more than what this costs because I haven't found the right tripod. With that being said, this has to be one of the best filmmaking gear that I own. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.